Well, here we go. Weather headlines read like this. Irma is a major Category 4 storm now, 130 mile hour winds, and Florida is to be impacted some way or another. Now, it's, it remains to be seen how strong that impact is going to be. And the timing for us, if we're going to get anything at all, it looks to be Sunday and Monday. So Sunday and Monday will be uh, the time to watch for the worst weather. Titan radar picture showing some showers around. Today, pretty good Labor Day for everyone out there in the area. Beaches had the day off. Nice day, uh, sunny, and uh, most of the storms east pushing off in that direction. Now, you can see uh, we have a few isolated cells inland. We had some storms earlier around that uh, may be creating some surface boundaries, if you will. We may see a few coastal showers later on this evening, uh, but the rain chance is still very small. And as far as the pictures go, you can see some heavier weather down to our south. Those storms in the inland counties pushing off toward the east. It's going to be the typical flow, too, out of the west to the east. So most of the storms tomorrow that do develop will develop along the sea breeze front and have a tendency to push off toward the east coast. 87 right now, the dew point 74 and the humidity at 65 percent. The high was pretty close to average. The low was 74. And what we are watching now, oh, what becomes crucial as far as where Irma will go in the future is this trough of low pressure developing over the northern Plain states. You see some of that blue coming down right there. That is a trough of low pressure which is developing. And it's uh, not all that strong right now, but it's expected to get all the way down here into the northern sections of Alabama and Georgia. But once it develops, there's some indications on some other forecast models that it will eventually uh, turn into a cutoff low. And what that means is we'll see a low pressure system here as opposed to way down here, and so it's not going to have as much impact on Irma. So that's the reason why now we think that Irma is going to be moving closer to Florida as a result of that trough of low pressure. A very intense storm, top winds at 130 miles an hour, could go as high as 150 by Tuesday afternoon. There are hurricane watches out now for all of Puerto Rico and the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. That's a hurricane watch, soon to be changed over to a warning, I do believe. And then hurricane warnings are in effect for all the islands, the northern Leeward Islands, uh, from again, you can see uh, those islands are all under a hurricane warning. Antigua, as well as Barbuda, All Saints Island, under that hurricane warning, they could be dealing with a, a strong Category 4, if not 5, hurricane on in through Wednesday. Well, here's, I, I took it off from Thursday, and you can see this is a Saturday, and then on Sunday, this is the Euro model. On Sunday at 6 o'clock, it shows it just off the coast of Miami and West Palm Beach, skirting along the coastline there. That would be the worst case scenario. Uh, like we saw last year, if it were to stay just offshore, it wouldn't lose as much strength. If it makes landfall, obviously it would be devastating, but it would begin to lose strength as it moves over land. Now in this situation, this is Sunday at 6, you can see the scale above 50 mile an hour winds in that uh, purple color that you see stretching all the way over to the sun coast on Sunday. So we would be uh, seeing a very large storm system with a huge wind field. This is the GFS, the U.S. model, showing similar pattern as far as where it's tracking and where it's going. Uh, this one takes it into Miami and uh, South Dade there. You can see uh, we could see that system cause all sorts of havoc. It could be a Category 4 at that point. Water temperatures throughout this region in the low, uh, low 90s in some cases. Uh, so very much a, a, a big area of fuel source here for this storm to get stronger and larger. And you can again see the winds, tropical storm force winds across west central Florida in this scenario. Now there's still a chance it could pass even further west of that. So we'll have to watch that. Again, uh, the top winds now are at 130 going up to 150 we think tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And the forecast cone of uncertainty, we're hoping more on this end, edge to the east of the Bahamas. There's a chance it could be a little bit further south of that too. There's a lot of things coming into play as far as where this storm is going in the future. And so you can't make any decisions at this point, but be prepared. Check your hurricane supply kit. Make sure it's up to speed. Go over your plan with your family and know what to do in case a hurricane watch or hurricane warning is put into effect. Uh, light chop out there for boaters. Seas running one to two feet. And uh, the uh, water temperature very warm here, too, along the eastern Gulf of Mexico. is at 90 right now. And as far as the tides go up, coming low tide will be at 733. Sunset at 747. Partly cloudy, isolated storms. Possible this evening. Rain chance at 20% tomorrow. Just a 30% chance for mainly inland storms, a high of 90. And then we start to see an increasing chance for rainfall. Thursday and Friday, not due to Irma, but just a west-southwest wind with more moisture moving into play. Sunday and Monday, the two biggest days at this point, subject to change, but that would be the biggest day that we would see right there Sunday and Monday.